So here are the answers to the questions at the end of the previous chapter. Hopefully you've got all these right. So why don't you tick these off before we go on to polymers. Polymers are long chain molecules made up of many repeating smaller units called monomers. Now alkenes with their double bond can be reacted together to form polymers. For example, ethene can be polymerized to make polyethene or just polythene some of us say. Propene can be polymerized to make polypropene. Now polyethene is easy to shape, it's transparent, it's strong and we use it traditionally for making plastic bags and drink bottles and cling film out of. Polypropene is very strong and tough and we use that for making things like chairs and carpets and milk cranes. So what is a polymerization reaction? Now you can see here we can start out with ethene ethene C2H4 you can see there's a carbon carbon double bond that's what makes it an alkene and the little n in front of it means there are many of these now when it polymerizes that carbon carbon double bond opens up and each carbon can make four bonds so the two carbons can then each lengthen the chain in both directions and that's the correct way to draw polyethene we have the carbon carbon double bond is opened up so the carbons can lengthen the chain in both directions and we draw brackets around it and again the little n to give us the idea that there are many of them in a long chain so the monomer is ethene and the polymer is polyethene The problem with polymers is that uh, it's very hard to dispose of them, to get rid of them, because very few polymers are biodegradable. Now, biodegradable means broken down and decomposed by microbes, which is what we want to happen to rubbish. It needs to be decomposed and broken down. So disposing of polymers is therefore a real problem. Now, there is some new research going on. We have new polymers which are being developed which contain cornstarch. Now, this is a carbohydrate and therefore carbohydrates can be decomposed by microbes, which is good. But again, if we're using a potential food crop, this again means that we're using up land which should be producing a food crop and we're also destroying habitats. Now, using polymers is quite a big deal. There are quite a few impacts of using polymers. The advantages are that they have very useful properties. We can make all sorts of items out of them that we can't make out of other materials. They can be recycled. So, for example, old plastics can be ground up and processed and used to turn into fleece that we make jumpers out of and milk crates. Recycling itself is a growth industry. That can create a lot of jobs. And there are some new polymers which can be made to be biodegradable. But the main disadvantage of polymers is that we use dwindling resources to make them. They come from oil. They may not biodegrade at all, or they may take a very long time. And there's a lot of energy used in the production of polymers. And all these manufacturing processes release CO2. Polymers can also be difficult to recycle if they're mixed materials, if you've got two or three different materials bonded together, so you can't separate them to recycle them. We're finding new uses for polymers all the time. Dental fillings, new wound dressings, shape memory polymers. These are polymers which remember and return to their original shape, having been distorted new types of packaging, waterproof coatings to go on fabrics, hydrogels, for example, soft contact lenses. We're finding new uses for them all the time. They're incredibly useful substances. 
OK, so quickly test yourself. Hopefully you've printed out all these notes so you can answer it now and find the answers at the beginning of the next chapter.